Greetings fellow engineers and welcome here on Tartarus Inc. This time on the fourth episode of my small trip gone large guide, I want to show you how to do the basic exterior of your ship and also I will cover my way to set up a hideable weapon system. So this is where we stopped last time. First thing I would like to do is placing the big thrusters roughly on the position I would like them to be in my final design. After that, get rid of all the placed small thrusters. Reason for that is simple. Since we want to integrate those into our hull design, they just would be in our way now. To prevent the ship from floating away, we place a long line of blocks and attach thrusters for all directions we have deleted. Ok, now for the hull itself. First thing we do, just close everything roughly. Maybe with using a few ramps and slopes to smooth out everything a little bit, but that is not 100% needed. Our goal now is to simply close the interior and maybe some other areas of the ship. When going back to the hinges, use the blaster sections to have a little gap between the hull of the ship and the moving ramp, so it can move freely and look nice integrated into the flow of the ship. Speaking of flow, one of the most important parts when building a ship in general, at least if you want it to look less like a flying brick and more aesthetically pleasing, is to build it using flow lines. What does that mean? Well, basically, try to avoid lots of 90 degree angles. Instead, use ramps and slopes to smooth out everything. One good method to do this, especially if you are unexperienced, is to start at the front and start to smooth out everything nicely and proceed further towards the back of the ship. Repeat that until you are pleased with the overall shape of your ship. Okay, we will leave it that way and come back to this when doing the detailing stuff later on. The last thing for today is the following. I want to have a few weapons that can fold in and out basically some hideable weapon base. One pro tip for that, if you have difficulties imagining how certain parts move, just take a piece of paper and draw what you want to build. Or just take a few pieces of paper and fold those the way you want your setup to fold in game. Anyways, I want a few Gatling guns to fold out left and right of the cockpit. To make it a little bit more cool I thought of a rotor hinge combination. The setup is pretty simple, just paste two lines of hinges onto the desired place. Then place two cargo containers for the ammo, wire everything up with connectors and place an advanced rotor. Don't forget to adjust the offset of the rotor to allow those whole stuff to rotate freely. If they are sticking out too much like in this case, just delete those again and place an additional conveyor to mount the weapons onto. Now comes the tricky part, setting up the timers. This is always a little bit complicated and, at least for me, takes a lot of brain using. From what I can tell we need 7 timers. 2 for folding it out, 2 for folding it in. 1 to trigger both variants at the same time, 1 to switch the folding timers between on and off alternately and 1 master timer to trigger all of this stuff in a certain order. Now how did I set this one up? Let's start off with the basic movement. To fold it in. I set up timer turret 1 and turret 1 1. Turret 1 reverses the rotor and starts turret 1 1 with a 3 second delay, which reverses the hinges. To fold it out, I have timer turret 2 and turret 2 2. When triggered, turret 2 reverses the hinges and starts turret 2 2 with a 3 second delay. Turret 2 2 then reverses the rotors. Mm. 
Now, how do we make it so that we only need to push one button for both actions? First off, we need a timer which triggers timer turret 1 and turret 2 at the same time. Then we need the switch timer. This one is set to toggle timer turret 1 and 2 on and off. Now to make it work you have to manually set one of those timers to off. If your turret is folded out, set timer block turret 1 to off and vice versa. The last timer is the master timer, which I labeled timer on off. What this one does is triggering the switch timer and starting the turret timer with a 1 second delay. Now, if you trigger the master timer, the whole process will start with one second delay to work nice and smooth. Alright, after this exhausting timer thingy, I think we might leave it here for today. Next time I will continue on the topics thruster placement and adding detail to the exterior. I hope you liked today's video and if you did be sure to leave a like, a comment and a sub if you haven't done so far. I hope to see you all next time and as always keep on engineering and cheers!